Well, I'm excited for 2022. I believe that God's going to do great things within your life this year. I believe that God's going to do great things within the life of our church. And as I was praying about the first message to bring in this new year, the Lord laid a word on my heart and it's a bit of a challenge and it's a bit of a difficult one. I know we like to have encouraging messages for the year ahead and I do believe it's an encouraging message, but I believe there's a challenge in this message for us as well. And the title of this first message of this new year is New Year, New Outlook. And we're going to be basing ourselves today in an Old Testament story, in an Old Testament book, in the book of Numbers. And we're going to be reading from Numbers chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. This is what it says. Soon the people began to complain about their hardship, and the Lord heard everything they said. Then the Lord's anger blazed against them, and he sent fire to rage among them. And he destroyed some of the people in the outskirts of the camp. Then the people screamed to Moses for help. And when he prayed to the Lord, the fire stopped. After that, the area known as Tibera, which means the place of burning, because the fire of the Lord had burned among them there. Then the foreign rabble, rabble who were traveling with the Israelites began to crave the good things of Egypt. And the people of Israel also began to complain. Oh, for some meat, they exclaimed. We remember the fish we used to eat for free in Egypt. And we had all the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks and garlic we wanted. But now our appetites are gone. All we ever see is this manna. I can't believe that 2022 is finally here. I can't believe how quickly, quickly Christmas has come and gone. And we're at the start of a brand new year. And it's one of my favourite times of the year. I love the start of a new year because it's an opportunity to pray, to plan for and prepare for the exciting new opportunities that are ahead of us. We think about all the incredible possibilities that lay ahead and it's an exciting time. You know, the new year is an opportunity for us to reassess our lives and to think about how we want to bring change into our lives. We think about the new habits, the new rhythms, the, the new goals that we want to set within our lives for the year ahead. It's a new chapter. We're flipping the script. It's a new page and we look forward to all that's going to come in this new year. However, although it's, a, it's an exciting time and we love this time, well I love this time of year and we love thinking about change and all that's going to happen within our lives, more often than not, after a few days and after a few weeks, we slip back into the old ways of doing things. We like the idea of change as human beings. We like to, the idea of it. But actually, when it comes to implementing change within our lives, it, it gets uncomfortable. You know, although we like change, we are, if we're being honest, creatures of habit. we creatures of comfort. We like to do the same old, same old. We like to do what we've always done. We like to have everything set out as we always have it set out. And all you have to do is just listen to people talk about this pandemic. You know, this pandemic brought so much change to our world and, you know, it brought about a lot of bad change to our world, yes, but it also brought about some good change to us as well. And, you know, we think about, as we think about all these fresh restrictions that we're now facing, you know, more often than not, what I hear people saying is, I'm just fed up now. I want to go back to the way things were. I, I just want to go back to normal before this pandemic with all these restrictions and all these changes. I want the good old days back. Maybe you've said words like that in recent days. You know, I've said that as well. You know, even as Christians, even as followers of Jesus, with all the, disrupt all the disruptions that we've had to our weekly worship schedule, to our church life, and to all that happens within the life of our church, you know, many of us are desperate to go back to the way that things were before this pandemic. You know, if I had a pound for every time somebody came up to me from our congregation and say, and said, when are we reintroducing this? When we're starting that meeting back up again? You know, I'd be a millionaire right now because of the amount of times people have said that to me. You know, we want to go back to the way things were within our normal everyday lives, within our Christian lives. We, we just want to go back to normal. But you know, I wonder at the start of this new year, what if those good old days that we long for, what if those, the past in which we're so craving for and we long for, what if it wasn't as good as we remember it to be? What if it wasn't as good as we, we keep remembering and imagining in our heads? What if it wasn't as good as we seem to think that it is? 
What if at the start of this new year of 2022, we need to take off those rose-colored glasses when we look back at the past? What if it wasn't as good as we seem to remember it to be? And what if there's something greater that lies ahead of us? You know, the people of Israel, they had this problem when they were wandering through the wilderness. They often thought back at their, of their time in Egypt. You know, the Bible tells us that they had been delivered from slavery in Egypt. They'd been slaves in Egypt for 400 years and they hated their slavery and they cried out to God for God to deliver them from Pharaoh and from Egypt to break them out of their bondage. And God answered their prayers. God raised up a man named Moses and Moses was called by God and led by God to deliver the people from Egypt. And God answered their prayers. Moses led them out of Egypt and then they get to the Red Sea and Pharaoh changed his mind. He wanted to bring the people of God back to Egypt as slaves. But we see at the, when they're stuck on the Red Sea, on the bank of the Red Sea, the sea before them, the enemy behind them. Moses cried out to God. God performed a miracle. He parted the Red Sea and the people of God walked through the Red Sea. And the Pharaoh and all his army were completely destroyed as the waters came back to normal. And, and it was an incredible moment. There was a praise party that was taking place right on the bank of the Red Sea. It must have been absolutely incredible. God answered their promise. And God was going to lead them now into the incredible future he had for them. He had promised them this land which was flowing with milk and honey. It was a land in which they were going to prosper. And he had made this promise to his people. And whilst they were going to the promised land, as they were walking through the wilderness, our God provided for his people. Every day they would wake up in the wilderness where there was no free, fruit, where it was barren, where there was very little water. And God provided food for his people that sustained them right the way throughout their time in the wilderness. And every morning, God would supernaturally feed his people by providing this substance which fell on the ground while they were sleeping. They would wake up, open the tent doors, and this substance, substance which is called manna, which is like bread from heaven, was there for them. And this would sustain them for, for the day. And every day, God would do this. And Manna literally means, what is it? It was like a bread so bread of heaven and six days a week, God would provide manna for his people. And on the seventh day, they were to store up some more for that Sabbath day. And God was gracious. God provided for his people. They had this substance daily for breakfast, for lunch and for dinner. God graciously provided for his people. But you know, after a while, his people got fed up with this manna. They got fed up of this miracle that God was providing day after day. They got used to it. They normalized the supernatural. And, you know, I believe that's a dangerous thing that we can do within our lives where we normalize God and, and, and the things of God and they become normal to us and we take them for granted. That's a dangerous place in which we can be within our lives. And we see this happening here. They got fed up of this manna from heaven. And listen to what, what they said following this in verse 4 to 6 once again from Numbers chapter 11. Then the foreign rabble who were traveling with the Israelites began to crave the good things from Egypt. And the people of Israel also began to complain. Oh, for some meat, they exclaimed. We remember the fish we used to eat for free in Egypt. We had all the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlics we wanted. But now our appetites are gone. All we ever see is this manna. You know, the Bible tells us here that there was a group of people who had left Egypt with the Israelites. They'd come from Egypt with the people of God. They weren't Israelites. They weren't part of the people of God. But they came along with them as they escaped from Egypt. Now, we're not sure why they left with Egypt. Some Bible commentators have their opinion on this. Some say that this group of people, this riffraff or these rabbles, as the Bible, uh, this rabble as the Bible calls them, the Bible commented to say that some of them left because they were fed up with the hardship and the hard conditions and they were afraid about what Pharaoh was going to uh, impose on that nation at that time, on the people in Egypt at that time. So that's one of the reasons why they left. And the Bible commented to say that they left because they didn't want to be slaves anymore, which, you know, ev you know, I'm sure nobody wanted to be slaves at that time. So that's why they left Egypt. Where some Bible commentators say that 
actually they just had some good intentions they heard about God the good things that God had done the miracles that God had done and so they just wanted to tag along for the ride however what we do know about this group of people was that although they went with the people of God and although they seen the miracles that God had performed on behalf of his people the Bible says that they in their hearts never changed because of God they didn't believe in God they didn't have faith in God and as a result of that we see that this group of people begin to influence God's people in a bad way. Said it still happens today. You know, it's a problem that the church and Christians face today because Satan, our enemy, he's an imitator and he's an infiltrator. That is what our enemy does. That's who he is. He copies God. He's a counterfeit, but he turns what God means for good into evil and he infiltrates and where God wants to bring life and wants to bring hope and wants to bring promise the enemy wants to bring destruction and harm to the people of God wherever they are the children of God and the people of God we can be sure that the enemy has counterfeits you know it's sad to say but we see that even within the life of the church there are people who act like Christians talk like Christians look like Christians but they're actually wolves in sheep's clothing and we have to be aware of this I've encountered this even within my own life they look good but on the outside they pretend on the outside that they they belong to God but in their heart they don't believe in God they don't belong to God and they don't long for the things of God and eventually after time their true allegiance is revealed and we, they, that will happen within their lives and you know even the apostle Paul he warned about this he warned the Christians about this in the New Testament when he wrote these different letters to the different churches he warned them about false teachers entering into the church that you know as people of God we should test everything by scripture I want to encourage you to do that with every word that I preach that comes from my mouth test it against scripture make sure that that is in line with God's word because that is our standard but you know the Bible says that false teachers can infiltrate the church and lead Christians astray there are false believers who infiltrate the church and can lead Christians astray there's a false gospel that's being preached as well which we need to be careful of and you know more often than not it's sad to say but Satan does his best work not from people outside of the church but it's actually allowing people to come inside of the church who aren't part of the family of God and have no interest in being part of the family of God now I'm not saying I want to make this clear that as a church we should close our doors to the world outside that is for a select group of people not at all because the Bible says that God loved this world so much he gave his only son that whoever believes in him we're a church gateway church is a church that opens its doors to all people no matter who you are what your background is where you are from but you know we have to be careful that we will not compromise as a people against what God has written in his word we will not compromise our faith for, for anybody or for any other beliefs we believe in the word of God we stand for the word of God and we want to, as a church to protect those who want to know God and if you have no intention of knowing God or following God then you know as we see here that it can bring damage to churches and that's what happens here to the people of Israel this rabble they cause trouble they long for the things of Egypt they long for the food of Egypt and they were influencing the people of God and so the people of God the Israelites they began complaining saying oh I want that meat from Israel remember the garlic remember the cucumbers remember how good that food was in Israel and now every day we've got to wake up to this weird substance you know this manna we don't even know what it is we've got to deal with this every day it was miracle food from God God was being gracious God was providing for his people but it wasn't good enough for his people so the Israelites they begin complaining they were always complaining these people were always complaining they were never satisfied and unfortunately you and I can be like that today as well you know these Israelites they spoke of the good old days in Egypt but you know they forgot these Israelites they spoke about this food and they were remembering all this, these amazing meals they had in Egypt and now they were in the wilderness and why did God leave them you know let them leave from Egypt but it's amazing although they were remembering the food from Egypt which really it wasn't that good because it would have been scraps because they were slaves they forgot about their slavery they forgot about their bondage they've forgotten about how they were actually slaves in Egypt and they were trying to think back you know oh, remember the good old days when in fact it was nothing but the good old days they just barely made it through they just 
fortunately escaped by the grace of God, because of God. That's the only reason that they got out of that bondage, out of that tyranny. It was because of the goodness of God. And we see here that they were longing for the things of Egypt. They were craving the things that would satisfy their flesh. And they forgot about the bondage in Egypt. You know, this story here, it's a sad moment in the history of the people of God and in the history of Israel. And, you know, they're complaining and they're mourning for all these things and constantly looking back to the past, which wasn't that good. It actually brought about some serious consequences. And the serious consequence of their longing for the past and the things of the past, those bad things which didn't satisfy them instead of the things of God, it actually meant that they missed out on the promise of God. A whole generation died out in the wilderness and they didn't enter into the promised land because of their unbelief, because of their disobedience, because of their complaining, because their focus was on the past and not on the now, the present, and not on the future and what God had for them. You might be wondering today, Luke, this is a bit of a heavy message to start 2022. You know, I was hoping for a bit of a, an uplifting message to start 2022. You know, I really believe, I just want to be obedient to God. And I believe that God has a word for you and me, and in particular for our church at the start of this new year. Yes, there are restrictions that are coming in. And, you know, it looks like we're going backwards instead of moving forwards. However, I believe the word of the Lord to us as a church, and I believe it's to individuals as well in 2022, is to stop looking back at the way that we used to do things and instead ask God for a fresh outlook and ask God what he is doing in the here and now. Instead of longing for the things of the past and the way that we used to do things, let's start asking God, God, what are you doing today? Jesus, what are you doing today? Where are you? Lord, what are you blessing? How, where are you? Let, let us follow you. Where do you want to lead us? What do you want us to do, God? Instead of longing for those old things, which really weren't that good, you know, let's long for the things that God has for us. You know, there are times in our lives and things in our lives that we keep remembering that actually God wants us to forget. Now, I'm not talking about dismissing the past completely from our lives. You know, as a church and as individuals, we thank God for the past. We thank God for all that he's done within our lives, what he's done within the life of the church. But we can't live in the past because if we live in the past, we die to the future. We forget about the future and all that God has for us. And I actually believe that if we start, keep living in the past, we are neglecting a generation, this generation of the future. We hinder the generation of the future. If we as a people keep looking back at the past, or oh, remember what God did, remember the good old days. You know, I'm so grateful for the 1904 revival, but I want to see the 2022 revival. I want to see God move in our time. I want to see churches planted. I want to see people finding Jesus as their Lord and Savior today. I want to see this church grow in today, not just hear about how God moved in the past. I want to see God move today and I believe God is encouraging us to have a new outlook at this new uh, at the beginning of this new year God's got an incredible future for you as well stop holding on to that past those past mistakes those past regrets those past hurts instead start moving forward into all that God has look at what God's doing in your life today look how God has blessed you today and start moving forward into all that he has for you stop building up the past in your mind remember it for what it was but don't allow the enemy to allow you to keep fantasizing over the past protect your mind don't look back you know Jesus gave this stark warning in Luke chapter 9 verse 62 he said but Jesus told him anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God Jesus here was talking about the second coming and encouraging believers to keep looking for the second coming and not to go backwards to the old life and I know that many people have preached a, a message about this, encouraging Christians not to go back to the old ways of living of, for the things of this world. And I want to encourage you to do that. But I believe the word of the Lord to us as a church is, let's not go back to the way that we were doing things before. But instead, let's ask that question. Jesus, what are you doing now? God's got a plan for us. God's got a future for us. God's got a plan for you. And as we come to a conclusion of this first message today, in this seat, in this brand new year in 2022 I believe that God wants to encourage us that there are far better things ahead than there are behind us I believe that for us individually Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says this 
For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14, Paul says, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. God's got a future for you. There's better days ahead of you individually. I want to encourage you like Paul, press on. I know, I know today that it's hard. I get it that you're scared about letting go of the past and moving forward. I get that it's going to be difficult and it means change. And you know, the things that we do, things are going to change. I get how awkward it is and how afraid we can feel because of it. But God is encouraging us. There's better things ahead. Don't hold on to the things of the past and miss out on the blessing today and the blessing tomorrow. And I believe this is true for us corporately as a church as well. You know, I want to say, you know, I really feel that God's called me in this season, not for us to go backwards and lead us backwards as a church. Many of you were asking, when are we restarting this ministry and that ministry? But I want to let you know today that we're not. We want to follow Jesus. If God tells me to do it and God tells us as a church to do it, of course we will do it. We want to follow God, but we're not going to follow tradition. We are following our Savior. We're following the Spirit into all that God has for us because God's given us a promise. Haggai 2 verse 9 in the message. This temple is going to end up far better than it started out. A glorious beginning, but an even more glorious finish. A place in which I will hand out wholeness and holiness. Decree of God of the angel armies the start of this new year. I'm praying for myself individually and for us as a church for fresh vision, for fresh passion, for fresh courage, for new ministries, for a new move of God, for God to do a new thing within our lives, within this church, for God to bring in new people and raise up new people. I'm praying for God to do a new thing because God is able to do that. Even in the middle of a pandemic, I believe that God is gonna bring about growth, bring about expansion. I believe that God is gonna do it. We're gonna see spiritual growth. We're gonna see numerical growth. We're gonna see lives change. The kingdom of God advancing. The church of Jesus built up. We're gonna see God move within this house. But in order for that to happen, we need to have a new outlook. To stop looking back at the past of the way we used to do things and the way things were in the past. Take off those rose-coloured glasses and let's start moving forward. Let's look to the future. God, give me a new vision. God, may I get excited about the things that are ahead of us. Let's ask God at the start of this new year for a new outlook. And let's ask him today to help us to stop looking back at the past and start looking forward to the even more glorious future that he has for you for me and for our church and so the encouragement for you and me today is let's move forward let's pray for a new outlook and let's see what God is going to do God's going to do great and mighty things in your life and within our church and let's press on to all that he has for us I pray that God will bless you in 2022 we are here for you as a church we are praying for you and I'd love to pray for you right now if that's okay would you join me let's pray together Lord, we just thank you for this encouragement today. And you, Lord, you know every person who's watching this right now, Lord. You know the things that they're struggling to let go of from the past, Lord. You know within all of our lives, Lord, we like to hold on to those things from the past. And and Lord Jesus, sometimes we remember those things from the past in a good light. And Lord, we do want to honor you and thank you for all that you've done in the days gone by. But Lord, help us not to hold on to the things that you have done before. But help us all to press on individually and corporately as a church as well. Help us to see the incredible plans and promises that you have for us as a church. Help us to step forward and to follow your spirits leading instead of traditions leading, Lord. Guide us, we pray, into the glorious future that you have for us individually and corporately. And Lord, we pray that you will do this so that you would be glorified, that your kingdom would advance, Lord, and that your name would be exalted. Lord, we thank you and ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray today, bless every person who's watching online, bless every home, and may we have a prosperous and an incredible 2022, and may we know you with us. Lord, we thank you and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.